think Hollywood and independent film have harvested everything they can out of the post-apocalypse horror. It seems to be the easiest genre to produce. Filming in abandoned houses, forests and junkyards with a limited amount of actors on set creates the easiest shorthand for any particular amount of world building you want. With A Quiet Place, we've instantly got a hook. You have to be quiet or monsters will find and kill you. This leads a couple and their children to live in farmland for a year and a half without any verbal communication. There is instantly a lot of nifty narrative elements utilised from living in such a confined, stressful environment, such as the boy who has been raised in this life suffering from deep anxiety. And to counter that, we've got a girl who is living in a world without her disability affecting her. If you were deaf in a world without sound, does it affect you at all? We also have a pregnant woman. Many post-apocalypse films have dealt with the idea of raising children in this new environment, but the film goes one step further, with the idea that you can't go into labour without luring the monsters in. So do you attempt a silent birth? This film creates a stressful as environment with the horror trope of gotcha jump scares being mixed in there with real scares, but both are just as effective. Although because of the boxed in nature of the film, we don't really have any idea of the outer world and how they're going. We see newspapers proclaiming that they understand that the monsters are attracted by sound, but since the towns are empty and no one's answering the SOS machines, does that mean that information did not help them at all? The monsters seem pretty vulnerable. Are we to believe that there's millions of them that have taken out billions of people? We don't know and probably won't as this film is an exercise in tension and release. We see the monster in glimpses at first, with one of my favourite moments being a reveal that the monsters have a human-shaped torso and head, but with huge scissors as their limbs. But we eventually see the whole body and it appears a bit more conventional in close-up than I imagined. Which is a shame, but in the age of ADHD cinema, I don't think it's possible to create a film with unexplained mysteries anymore. The closer the film comes towards the end, the more conventional it becomes, unfortunately. We have the classic frustrating horror tropes, such as the selfless yet pointless sacrifice, a weakness in the monsters that is obvious to everyone except the characters, and the ultimate horror trope of the flailing, annoying character moments manufactured in an attempt to increase tension. But if the film starts breaking its own internal law for the benefit of the story, is it even worth telling the story in the first place? But as with comedy, horror has one goal in mind, and it does achieve it. And is it an individual take on it? Yes and yes. 7 out of 10. I also have a podcast in which I have discussed the political news stories of today. Thank you for hopefully watching.